So I want to welcome you back to a, another edition of the Book of Bubble Fett. This is going to be our episode five reaction. Uh, guys, you'll have to excuse me. I've been down with COVID-19 for the past week and a half. Um, so my energy level is really not where it should be. And my uh, voice may not be exactly where it should be. Uh, but we're going to troop through this and uh, hopefully we'll get a really, really good episode here. Now, uh, I've been enjoying this season, and I know a lot of fans have not really been enjoying the uh, season as much, or maybe feel as though that uh, this series hasn't been as good as The Mandalorian. The happenings of last week's episode, uh, or some of the hints that we got from last week's episode, uh, we should be getting Din Djarin in this particular episode, and it looks like we may be finished with the flashbacks. I know a lot of fans have also had problems with the flashbacks as well. Uh, so now the main story or the current timeline of the story uh, should be able to move forward uh, without any interruptions. However, uh, like I've said, I've enjoyed uh, this season very much and I'm very much looking forward to this particular episode. So uh, last week, what we saw in the... Uh, episode four, how Boba Fett got Slave One back. I know they're calling it the Fire Spray. That is the model name uh, of the ship. Uh, they haven't necessarily changed the name of the ship. They're just not going to refer to it as Slave One. Um, I am going to continue to uh, call it Slave One. So uh, I hope that doesn't bother anyone out there. Uh, definitely does not bother me at all. Uh, it's just a name. And it's the name I've grown up with as far as that ship is concerned. So I'm going to continue to call it the Slave One. But uh, we got to see how Boba obtained Slave One with the help of Fennec Shan. Uh, we also got to see through the flashbacks how he came upon Fennec Shan and how he basically saved her by taking her to the mod shop and having her and basically uh, having her insides. Uh, modified. So I thought last week's episode was really, really good. Um, the only issue that I had with last week's episode, and it wasn't that the music in the mod parlor was bad. It just seemed a little out of place for Star Wars. Um, it, it's music that we have not had in, in Star Wars before. So it just seemed a, a little out of place. But other than that, I thought it was an excellent episode. Uh, I forget what I scored. I think I scored it a uh, 8.5 maybe a 9.0 um, but I, I thought it was a really really good episode and uh, we also got to see Black Chris Stanson join our team and of course we had our meeting at the table with the four families so um, really really good stuff last week so uh, I don't want to waste any more time guys I want to get into this episode guys so let's go ahead and get into episode five of the book of Boba Fett guys let's get into this episode we, I know that silhouette to look at that still has the uh, spear it's got the best guard spear I'm here for Cabo Bias. Cabo Bias. Huh. There are no options, buddy. I can bring you in warm. Or I can bring you in cold, baby. Get him, Mando. Woo! Dark Saber. <laughs> Woo! Woo! I love it. Ah! Damn it. Did he cut himself? Whoa! 
brutal. I'll check his head. That was fast. You're a good hunter. Oh, look at that. Ah, we're going to see the other Mandalorians. The armorer. We haven't seen her since season one. There are three of us now. Oh, there's only three. What weapon caused such a wound? The dark saber. The mythosaur. The mythosaur, the mythical beast that uh, Bubba Fett rode in the uh, holiday special. Gonna melt it down. Exactly. Bo-Katan Creed was born of a mighty house, but they lost sight of the way. Her rule ended in tragedy. They lost their way, and we lost our world. We would have not survived the great purge. Are we gonna are we gonna see the purge? Uh-oh. Nice. Wow, all those bombers. The night of a thousand tears. Wow. Damn. Damn, look. Look like Terminator. Look, that's sweet. What shall I forge? Something for a family. Something for a family. For a specific family. Grogu. Grogu. He's no longer. What shall I forge for the family? Grogu. Sweet. That's sweet. I wonder what that is. Glad he's being taught how to wield the blade. Maybe the dark saber belongs to 
belongs in someone else's hands. Mm. It was forged by my ancestor, founder of House Vizla. Vizla. And now it belongs to me. Because he won it in combat. That's right. And now I will win it from you. Man, stop. Let's do it. I wonder if he's gonna lose the blade right here because he d he does not know how to use it. it it's broke that viper blade. Ah! He can't wield it either. Ah. It is done. Dinjarin. Have you removed your helmet? Yes, he has. Like trees, you must plow. I have. And he's gonna remove it now. This is the way. Are we gonna get to see what he made for Grogu? He's definitely gonna see Grogu again. I wonder what he made him. He's headed to Tatooine. Oh, look. Cool. Same droid from Fall. Damn. Okay. Ah, uh, she's back. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It, it's exactly what people said it would be. It's a Naboo fighter. It's in pieces. This is a pile of junk. Look, at least let me put her together before you decide. You give me that? Where did you get this? It's brand new. Well, Jawa new. Jawa new. That she needs, and I'm going to make it work, all right? I've dated a Jawa. Uh, she dated a Jawa. Stop it. We got a straight up Mando episode in the middle of Boba Fett. And isn't he gonna need an R2 unit to, to run it? You give me a razor crest, you can have it right back. Oh, Bantha did it all. These are a lot harder to come by than some plain old razor crest. Razor crest. Nah, I mean, I want a razor crest, though. This is nice, but he needs a freighter. How is he gonna bring in bounties in a one man ship? Nice. Oh, wow, it's chromed out. Diagnostic first. Nah, I can hear her. She's hurrying. Send her off. 
Nice. Engaging forward drives. Nice. Nice. That thing is flying. Nice. Vegas Canyon, baby. Sweet. Now, what is that? Uh oh, no, darn it. Yes, new voices. Huh. <laughs> Wizard. Finnick? on the house. I gotta pay a visit to a little friend. And... Oh, wow. Those are bantha heads. Wow, that is crazy. So they were cutting up bantha meat in that, um, in that, uh, meat market. Okay, wow. Really, really good episode. I did enjoy that episode a lot. We learned a whole lot uh about the mandalorian and what he's been through um since the last episode gave grogu to uh luke basically was a mandalorian episode not really a boba fett episode i wonder how the fans are going to feel about that i think people are going to enjoy this episode but this was more or less uh an episode to kind of catch us up with the mandalorian uh to see what he's been wh where he's been we also got to see him join back up with the, with the covenant uh, the Mandalorian Covenant, uh, he had to fight uh, once again to retain the Darksaber against Pre Vizsla. Um, obviously, Pre Vizsla, that sword is from his house. He definitely wanted that sword in honor of his house. We, we saw him uh, engage the Mandalorian in battle over the Darksaber, and, uh, which was really, really cool. And then, of in course, in the initial scene, we saw the Mandalorian going after a bounty, uh, getting a very brutal kill uh, against, uh, I, I don't know the, the name of the species there, but um, just a really brutal scene uh, where he actually injured himself uh, prior to uh, he, him meeting back up with the Covenant. Uh, we learned that the Covenant is now uh, only of three, uh, which I believe includes the Mandalorian because we only saw Pre Vizsla and the Armorer um there we didn't see any other mandalorians um and then of course we also learned that the beskar spear uh was forged into something for grogu 
exactly what that is, we don't know. We haven't seen it yet. Um, but uh, we, that definitely gives us an indication that we will be seeing Grogu again in the uh, upcoming season of The Mandalorian. So uh, some really, really good stuff. And then, of course, we also saw The Mandalorian get his new ship, which is a Naboo fighter. Um, really cool. And the rumors were true uh, about that fighter and him gaining that fighter. And uh, obviously, we saw that here in this episode uh, with the test flight. Really, really interesting stuff. And then, of course, Fennec Shan shows up at the end offering Din Djarin uh, a job. And he says it's on the house. And then uh, at the end there, he also says that he's got to uh, catch up with someone or meet up with someone. I don't know if that's Grogu. Uh, I'm assuming that's who he's talking about. So we'll see if we may actually see Grogu uh, in this series. I'm not sure, depending on what exactly the Mandalorian meant by that. But um, really, really good episode. Enjoyed it immensely. Um, but like I said, it was basically a Mandalorian episode as opposed to a Boba Fett episode. We didn't even see Boba Fett in this episode at all. The only other person from the Boba Fett series that we saw was Fennec Shan there. And for uh, how she knew that Din Djarin would be on Tatooine, I don't know, but she obviously found him. Um, but some really, really good stuff in this episode. And uh, I did enjoy it a lot. It'll be interesting again to see what the fans think because not a lot happened. We um, didn't get any forward movement in the main plot of this particular story for the Boba Fett. So uh, it's going to be interesting again to see what the fans are, are uh, thinking of this particular episode. But I did enjoy it and it definitely moves uh, a lot forward in regards to the Mandalorian. It catches us up with where he is and, and, and what's going on. Uh, it looks like at this particular point, he's not a part of the Covenant uh, because he has removed his helmet. So it'll be interesting to to see if the Mandalorian does travel back to Mandalore to, um, I, I forgot what he needed to do to redeem himself, but it had something to do with the mines of Mandalore. Uh, and uh, But the mines have been destroyed. Uh, so I don't know if, he, if he's going to be able to accomplish what he needs to accomplish to redeem himself, to get back into the covenant. Uh, but uh, again, we'll see once the season three of The Mandalorian comes out later on this year. Uh, but that obviously is a very interesting storyline that will be a part of that particular series. And then, of course, uh, seeing Din Djarin with this new ship, uh, which is interesting. And I love the ship. I think it's absolutely great. Uh, I, I still would prefer the Razor Crest uh, because it's it's a freighter. It's a big freighter. He can store his bounties on there it's just a lot more room for him uh and and seems more of a proper ship for a bounty hunter uh something very similar to what slave one is for boba fett uh, 51 minutes uh for this episode which is a, a lot of time uh to to just spend on the mandalorian when this is supposed to be the book of boba fett so um i, I again i thought it was a really really good episode and i did enjoy it it was very Nice to catch up with the Mandalorian and see what he's been up to. The dark saber was absolutely amazing. Uh, it was great to see that weapon once again, and of course that will be pretty much his main weapon moving forward. Now, how he learns to wield it will be interesting because, as we saw, he struggled uh, mightily with that weapon and and trying to handle it. So he's going to need to do some more training with the Darksaber, which is something I hope we'll see future episodes of The Mandalorian, guys. And so. then, of course, there was also the Great Purge that we also got to see in this particular episode, which was absolutely amazing to see uh, with all of the bombers and the bombardment of Mandalore. And then, of course, we also saw what looked like T2 type of apocalypse with the K2SO droids kind of marching through the rubble or the devastation of Mandalore, just firing upon whatever they believe to be still alive uh, after the bombardment of the uh, planet of Mandalore. So uh, absolutely amazing scene uh, to see uh, just 
very, very cool stuff to see. And I really, really enjoyed that particular part of the episode as well. Just absolutely amazing to uh, for them to depict that moment for Mandalore, which we've all been wanting and waiting to see. And I, I hope we actually get a little bit more of that in the Mandalorian series. Uh, but we could get that in some of the other series as well. Once all of these Disney plus Star Wars series kind of converge on each other to complete this whole story. So uh, really, really enjoyed the great purge scene that they gave us there in this episode. I'm going to go ahead and score this episode. And I'm going to give this episode a 9.0 episode. Again, it was a lot of fun to catch up with the Mandalorian. Lots of Easter eggs in this particular episode. The only thing is, again, we didn't get any forward movement in regards to the progress of the, the book of Boba Fett. But obviously, we now see that Din, Din Djarin has joined Boba Fett's team. And uh, now we have uh, a, another heavy hitter for this squad that's being put together by Boba Fett and Fennec Shan. So one of the other things that I forgot to mention here was really cool to see the BD-1 droid in live action. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, like, like I said, there was many, many Easter eggs in this episode. Uh, of course, the Naboo fighter as well, Beggar's Canyon. Uh, was really, really nice to see uh, all of that here. And I'm sure there were many other Easter eggs uh, that I may have missed in this particular episode, but uh, really good stuff uh, that they added here in this particular episode. And then, of course, that world uh, that we saw, that one, that world is basically one strip of, um, I, I don't know what even to, to call it, but it was really, really cool and absolutely amazing. And I think it was nice for fans to actually get away from Tatooine for a little bit. I think a lot of fans will also enjoy that as well. Uh, great episode, guys. Enjoyed it immensely. Let me know what your thoughts are in regards to this episode. Did you enjoy this episode? And how do you feel about not seeing anything in regards to the Book of Boba Fett and this more or less being a Mandalorian-centric episode? Uh, did you feel that that hurts this series or does it help to enhance uh, the story? Let me know and put those comments down below, guys. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And of course, catch me next week for episode six of the book of Boba Fett, guys. And of course, from the father to the son to the Obi-Wan Force Ghost, may the Force be with you always.